Welcome back to another video collaboration from the creative design team. Today we're going to be showing you creative ways to help kids smile brightly. Now you're probably wondering how we can do that. Well, hello, I'm excited to share with you this special stamp set today. This stamp set is designed for Close to My Heart's Operation Smile program, and this is called Every Bit of Wonderful. And what is special about this stamp, if you look on the back of the catalog, you'll see more information. When you purchase the Every Bit of Wonderful stamp set, $7 of the proceeds goes to help with Close to My Heart's life-changing mission. And this helps children all around the world. I'll leave more information in the description box below about Operation Smile, so be sure to check that out. We are also featuring this bright stack you see here in the catalog, and this is a six by six bright stack, and it's a collection of all of these fabulous papers. Now, I kind of made a mistake. Resourceful me, I'm thinking, I have a lot of these papers in the 12 by 12, I'll just cut them down to six by six. Well, they're not just cut down. Turns out the patterns themselves have been resized so that they would be the proper scale for a six by six. So I have these two photos of my mom. She is an avid gardener and she finally got her first she shed after all these years. So that's her sitting in a little gardening shed. And when I saw this stamp, I just wanted to use these flowers and make a layout for her. So I'm going to start my layout with a sheet of white daisy for the foundation page. And I am following a sketch, which I'll show you in a little bit. So I know I want my two photos right like so. And now to be fair, since these are supposed to be six by six sheets, I'm going to use pieces that would you could do from the six by six size. Again, on the bright stack, the patterns themselves would be resized and scale is very important, especially when dealing with patterns. So there's a lot of colors to choose from in my photos, but I do see a blue color palette with some other colors splashed in. So I'm building up my layers here with the sapphire and lagoon and mint sheets of pattern paper. And since we have a garden theme, I definitely want to bring in this um, really pretty floral pattern paper. This is originally from So Much Happy, and that was a really fun paper pack. So I'm trimming this down and I'm just doing, it's an inch tall and I'm gonna do, sorry I'm off screen there, a little border halfway across the top and on the opposite corner on the bottom, which you'll see in just a moment there. Just offset them like so. And now I wanna bring in some of this peach pattern paper. So I'm going to use my uh, largest stitch circle and I went ahead and die cut a couple of those shapes there. And now this is just a little quarter inch strip I'm gonna put on the other side and then we'll balance that out on the top. Kind of mirror images, but opposite sides. So just trim our circle down so the bottom half is flat. You could do that afterwards, but it's just as easy now. And then I have cut out in mint cardstock this doily die cut here and we'll layer that under. I'm gonna cut this so it's about three inches from the top, just like so. And we're creating lots of layers here. Now I wanna bring in a little bit more of that polka dot peach paper there. So I'm just dovetailing the end and then we're gonna create a couple banners that just layer out the side of my photo here. And then we'll do this one to tie in that pay or sheet strip on the bottom. And I think that's looking good. I'm not 100% sure about that color on the top and bottom. It's kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit, I don't wanna say harsh, like um, it's dramatic and it's kind of drawing your eye to that area. So I'm probably gonna switch that out, but first I'm using my edge distresser. I'm gonna go around and distress the edges of all of my layers here. So I'm just showing you how you could do this with scissors if you don't have an edge distressor and I'll do the rest off camera. It's very subtle, but it makes a big difference. Now I'm going to swap those out for this and I do think that that's much better. It's just a softer look. We still have that color, but with the white and again, it's just softer and it's just not so distracting. 
So I like the way everything is taking shape and I'm just going to trim the edge here. Sorry, that's off camera, but I'm just putting the end of the ribbon at, or the paper at an angle. And then we'll get that tacked down into place just using my tape runner. And now we're ready to stamp and create our embellishments. So I flip my Versamat over so I can utilize that foam backing and I have a sheet of the White Daisy. So I'm gonna put some of these floral images on my acrylic blocks here. I'm just kind of looking to see what else I wanna use. And this is a brand new stamp, so I like to rub it on my arm to season it. It helps take that glossy finish off so it stamps a little better. And now I'm going to be coloring these in. So I'm using my intense black ink because this is a solvent based ink and it's alcohol marker friendly. Um, you can watercolor on it, um, all sorts of different mediums. So I'm not sure exactly how many I'm going to need. So I'm just stamping several of the images here. I generally like to do things in odd numbers. So I thought three was a good place to start. I can always make more later. So we'll just do these three different floral images here and I'll make five of the smaller ones. So I'll show you how I'm gonna color in the first one and then I'll do the rest off camera. I have the peach shimmer brush here and I've gone ahead and squeezed out just a little bit onto my section of all purpose mat. And now I'm using it like a paintbrush to go around this large floral image here. This has a really shimmery finish, which I'll show you in just a second, and it's just beautiful. I love the shimmer pens. So when I hold it up to the light, you can see that shine. And now I'm using a water brush and my sapphire ink. Let me zoom that in a little bit. So I love these new ink pads. Squeeze them together and then open them up and you have like this little built-in tray. So I'm just watering it down with my water brush and then picking up that color so I can paint with these um, or paint these little leaves in the sapphire color. And we'll do this on the other side here, just like so. Just wiping it off on a paper towel to clean it up in between colors. Now this is the old style ink pad and I still have some of the older colors. And this is Lagoon, which is currently available in the new ink pads. And so I'm doing the same technique, just using my water brush to color in these leaf area images here. I love how we can customize our stamped images to suit our layout. And with everything color coordinating, it just makes it really simple. So here I'm using my water brush again, but here I'm combining it with a watercolor pencil. So there's so many different ways to color in these stamped images. I use the red shimmer pen for those smaller flowers and then the Lagoon and Sapphire ink for these two here. Let's just take another minute to appreciate that beautiful shimmer there. And now we're ready for the fun part, the embellishing. So I know I wanna use these large flowers and kind of create a frame around my photos there. I'm gonna layer these smaller red ones underneath here, just kind of creating little clusters and I'm trying, yeah, I think that's kind of too much. I don't wanna use the third flower up there. So we'll just go just experimenting with them. I think less is more. We're gonna go with those two, the sapphire and the red. So I'm still trying out these little flowers and I think we can agree that the three forming that visual triangle looks the best. There's also a few different sprigs that you can incorporate. So I'm going to stamp a few of these as well. I think I wanna use the sapphire ink and layer this out from under my floral images. So again, this is a new stamp, so you always wanna test it out, make sure it's stamping very well. And then putting that foam sheet under where you're going to stamp helps ensure a nice crisp image also. So when you're stamping right onto your scrapbook page, you just wanna do everything you can to ensure success. I think that looks really good. I'll do one coming out the bottom here. And yeah, I like the way that looks. Just another layer. And I think I wanna repeat that up top. So I'm gonna to have to raise that flower up just a little bit so I can stamp on the white there. Let's get it situated the proper way. And that looks good. 
And then we'll just do a tiny little one peeking out in the corner like so. Perfect. So I want to add while I'm adhering these down that back to the Operation Smile stamp, the I do not make commission on that stamp and that's so they can maximize the proceeds that go towards Operation Smile and I think that is awesome. Another way you can donate is when you make a purchase on my website, when you're checking out, you'll see at the very bottom, there's a little box that says Operation Smile. And it'll ask you if you want to round up the change or you can enter in any amount that you feel led to give. There's even some fun t-shirts that you can purchase to support this cause. Lots of options, so be sure to check it out over on my website. Again, I'll have more information in the description box below, so check that out. So I'm just about done with my embellishments, and then I'll need to work on a title. So there are a few title options. They can be titles or subtitles, so I'm just moving this about the page, and it's going to fit right in that corner perfectly. It says, inside and out, you are beautiful. And I thought that was very appropriate for this layout of my mom. So just testing that out, I'm gonna use the sapphire ink and stamp this image right there. Make sure my page is lined up so I can get this straight. And give it a minute just to soak in, make sure we get a nice image, and yes, perfect. So I think I still wanna add a title to this layout and we have these simple serif dies and um, there's the upper and the lower case in the alphabet so that's really handy and I'm going to go ahead and use some peach cardstock and spell out the word lovely because that's what I think of when my mom is in the garden her garden is lovely she's lovely and it just seemed like the right word for this page so I'll go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine off camera and through the magic of filming, we now have our perfect little die cut letters. I really like the size of this set. I know this is going to be really, really useful for both scrapbook pages and card making. So I'm really excited about this. And I wanna show you guys, it does have a coordinating stamp that you can stamp over the die cuts. So again, both the upper and lower case. I'm not going to add that today because I have a lot of busy patterns going on on this page. So I just want the clean look of the cardstock for my title. Now I'm using some liquid glue and my tweezers to hold these little letters. And the liquid glue gives you just a minute to get them wiggled into place there. So we're just going around and getting these all tacked down. I like how they're overlapping my photo. When elements are layered together, it just gives them this sense of belonging and it's just very pleasing to the eye. Having these die cut letters is super handy because how many times have you gone to use an alpha sheet and you're missing the letter you want? So you look at the other letters and you try to get creative and sometimes it just doesn't work. So as long as you have the set of dies, you can always cut another letter. Now I still have a lot of the elements from the So Much Happy, so I pulled that out to use on this sheet. And I have these word stickers here. The one at the top says lovely day, and then at the bottom I have some kind of wonderful and all the details. And I just thought those were fun to incorporate. They match and they describe what's going on in the photos, and I thought, I love word stickers. They just add nice little touches. And then this is the crafty loose sequins and there's these tiny little black flowers. There's two different sizes. So I'm using my little jewel picker here and I'm just putting these around. Now I, these are not adhesive back so I will have to use little uh, drop of glue. I'm just going around and getting them placed and then I'll go back and adhere them in just a moment. But I like that, it just almost looks like black splatter but they are floral and they go along with the floral clusters really nicely. Be sure to check out all the other participants in today's video collaboration. I have them listed in the description box below. Here's some more videos that you might enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.